I love to read a book and be absorbed in words to escape. Hello everyone, so I'm going to do a tag. It's the ugly book covers tag. I was tagged directly by Leslie at Words of a Reader. This tag was created though by Nerd and Translation and uh, I will link the, her original video and Leslie's video in the doo doo in my pants. I wasn't, this wasn't a tag I would consider really doing, but Leslie did directly tag me, and for a specific reason, because we've had discussions about how I'm not very picky or very um, concerned either way about what my books look like. I'm not someone who goes wild over really pretty covers and who will specifically hunt and search and only purchase the cover that I like. I am far too cheap for that, and I shop according to price. So it's whatever is the cheapest option. If it's me who's doing the purchasing, I will go for the cheapest and the most readily available option that there is. I honestly don't care that much about what my books look like. And I, I don't know if that's simply because I'm lazy or if I'm not a true book lover because of this. Um, if I don't appreciate the aesthetics of it and the, the, the artwork involved in that kind of thing. I, but, I mean, I'd like to think I can still appreciate what I feel is a beautifully designed cover. I can still look at something and go, oh, that's really lovely, and oh, that's not so much, but it doesn't drive my purchases, and it certainly doesn't drive what is on my bookshelves, and what I choose, and how I organise my shelves, and all that kind of thing. It just doesn't inform it. I'm always incredibly reluctant to be superficial about anything, even books, because at the end of the day, it's the content that you're buying a book for, one would hope, and not just its exterior, and I mean, you know, just as somebody who's been teased their entire life for their appearance, I guess I, I take it into every aspect of my life, I suppose. I'm a little bit serious in that way. But I'd rather know that I'm still getting the same book. I'm still getting the same book no matter what the cover is. So, you know, if an ugly cover is cheaper, I really don't give a shit. And that is what I'm going to get because I'm looking for the book. I'm coming at it from a bit of a different angle than almost everybody I see in Booktubia who uh, people who are incredibly passionate about their covers and they, they love to wax lyrical about the really beautiful covers they have and how it how it can look on a shelf, especially if you're someone like Misty who organises by colour and that, and I'm not disputing that. It can look gorgeous and and I, I can certainly appreciate it. I'm, I just approach it differently. Okay, so the first question is, um, pick your five most hideous covers. I've got Tolkien's on fairy stories. I don't really know what the cover is meant to be. If it's like a, a glass dome uh, with the... I don't quite know. I, I, I don't really know what that is exactly. It's a bit impressionistic. I'm assuming that's meant to be a... Yeah, anyway. I mean, it's not that it's necessarily ugly or anything. I just don't quite get what it is, really. And <laughs> therefore, it doesn't really have that much of an impact. But, I mean, this was an instance where I was so happy to find this bloody book because I'd been wanting on fairy stories for years. And I found it and it was only $5. So... You know, I just grabbed it and I didn't give a shit. I, I, did, I just didn't care about its appearance. I was just so happy to have it. I do think that Lily Wilkinson's books get a bit of a bad rap in terms of the artwork in, in this country, at least. Pink, the Australian edition of Pink that I have is not so bad, but certainly the cover for Love Shy is awful. And also her second novel, which was A Pocket Full of Eyes, is just yeah. I, t I tend not to like photoshopped stuff. I don't like, like actual people with their faces on covers, so that'll be a pervading theme, probably. But it, it I think just because it looks like such a mishmash, and it just looks really clunky and kind of juvenile, and just, I don't know, they keep reminding me of really bad Disney TV movies. I just, yeah. I wish that my cover of Spring Awakening had a different photo. It's from the original, um, the first stage production that they did in England in the 60s, which is, you know, perfectly fine. I just wish it was a different scene with a bit more boom to it. It just doesn't really grab me. Again, this was something where I was so excited to just find it in, in an Aussie bookstore, but I got Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac by Gabrielle Seven, but I've seen some much nicer covers than this one. Again, just looks a bit hokey and kind of kiddish. I have, uh, like I said, I don't like photos, like, you know, actual people's faces, I tend to not like that on covers, so things like slide, because it's especially like close-up, extreme close-ups on people's faces, just don't do it for me, so slide by Jill Hathaway, even though, you know, she sees through the eyes of a killer, so it's still, 
resonant, but yeah, no. And then the Australian slash English uh, edition of Cruel by Jennifer Alban is just nowhere near as, as very pretty as the uh, the American edition. Also, it's just got a face, and I just don't like that. Also, you can I just, this is the reason I don't like faces because you can see when the, the all the editing has been done and you know the additional touch-ups and things, so you can see the red light shining through her actual strands of hair to make it look more red. I just, yeah. When you can notice that kind of stuff, especially on a human face, I just, nah. Books that got sent to me for review that I, you know, were unsolicited copies that I didn't request. So stuff like Crypt, uh, Trader's Revenge by Andrew Hammond, or Dead Time by Anne Cassidy. Just books especially that are more contemporary or action orientated, especially for YA stuff. They tend to just, I really don't like the designs in the middle of the time because they try to look gritty or hardcore or dark and it's just, it just doesn't grab me. So the second question is, what convinced you to buy these books or were they gifted to you? I was sent quite a few of them, as I said, for review copies, so I didn't really have a choice of what they looked like. And then, in other instances, like I said, it's just availability, and if they're the ones that are there, and they're the cheapest option out of, you know, if there's other ones to choose from, but these are the cheapest, then it's just what I go to grab, because I'm practical like that. I have to be. Question number three. Uh, show us a few good books with ugly covers. Thunder Whip by Libby Hairthorn, and this is a YA Aussie novel that I read when I was about 12 or 13, and, yeah, the picture isn't great. Mainly because, I mean, like, the actual artistry of it's fine, but the design of poor Lara's face is not all that attractive. But it's still a really lovely book, and it's still a favourite. So they probably could have found something nicer for, for Pygmalion, but, I mean, it still makes sense because, you know, uh, Eliza is a, a flower girl, and that was her profession. And, you know, the idea of them growing above where they should be kind of thing, so her transformation from the humble flower girl to the lady and all that. I mean, it still makes sense, but I just, I think because I'm not a fan of yellow, but <laughs> Pygmalion is still easily one of my favourite plays and a classic for a reason. People might consider this to be a really boring cover for Emily Bronte's complete poems, but it's a sketch that she herself did of a tree on their estate, so still makes sense. It doesn't matter that it's boring. Again, because, I, I don't know, photographs freak me out and children freak me out, especially when dressed up in this kind of outfit, but Margaret Atwood's Negotiating with the Dead is still a great book about writing and, you know, kind of autobiographical journey into how and why she writes, so I still think it's very much a worthwhile read, despite the creepy, creepy cover. The next question is, find a few bad books with ugly covers. I am one of those people that has an issue with the tendency in YA novels to have girls in pretty dresses on the front cover, often in silhouette. This trend just pisses me off, A, because it's so repetitive and you can see it everywhere, and because it's come to signify for me a quite by the books YA paranormal teen romance thing. That's just what it's, it's come to symbolise because it so often is the, um, the cover format used for that type of novel. So I'm very wary of it but also I just happen to have read some books and I don't think they're all that great and they happen to have that kind of cover. So an example would be Shadow Me by Tahira Mathi. Of course it does have different covers in different areas, but this just happens to be the one we've got here. The actual book itself I, I disliked. It's certainly one of the trends of the girl in the dress. Haunting Violet by Alexandra Harvey. I didn't like hate this book at all. It wasn't a bad read, but it's certainly doing the whole fallen thing of the you know, girl silhouetted in her dress idea. And I just think they could be a bit more imaginative <laughs> with the kind of things they're using for these covers, but whatever. Everneath by Brodie Ashton. Again, like Haunting Violet, it was an okay read, it wasn't a bad read, but still, gorgeous dress. It's like, it's, it, it feels like half the time th they're more so just trying to sell you a dress. Yet another example of a book that's not bad, but was okay. Uh, but I, I, again with the photos of people on there, but I hate head cut off deals. Um, Anna in the French Kiss has it where, you know, you can see Anna in full, but Etienne, you just see his arm on the bench. I, do, I don't like the... And, and Ebony does it as well. There's half a face. It's just annoying. The fifth question is, what makes a book cover ugly to you? And there can be a myriad of things. I, I tend to dislike it when you can tell it's style over substance, so if it's like the, you know, tendency of the girls in the 
dresses be where it's made to really just look quite pretty and attractive and allure alluring to get you in, to draw you in, but it's not really telling you anything about the story. And I mean, that can be okay, it keeps the air of mystery and it's all ambiguous and, you know, that makes you have to pick the book up and read the blurb and such, but I think just because it is so common and so typical in YA now especially, uh, it's just, it's boring to me and I just think it's very, very lazy. The photo thing with the real faces, I don't know, sometimes I think it's more of an, a movie poster approach. It just, it just depends on the layout and whether or not it's an extreme close-up or how the lighting is. If it is a real face, then the lighting plays a large part in how I respond to that as well. And I think a lot of the time for books it just feels, feels tacky is the only word I can think. It just, yeah, it feels cheap. It's, it's weird, but I don't like the idea of having a real person's face to associate with the characters in the story. I'm much better if it's an illustration a lot of the time, or if if it does have to be a silhouette, I can be, you know, because uh, so often you wonder if those commissioned to do the cover art have read the book because you could be looking at someone whose physical features are completely at odds with how they're described in the novel, and that really shits me. <laughs> I just, I keep fl flicking back, I'm like, that's not how you're meant to look at all, what the hell? Question number six. Are these books to be donated, etc., or will you keep them despite their unattractive appearance? Well, as is evident, I've kept an awful lot of books with unattractive covers, and that's never going to inform my giving something away. I will give a book away if I have no interest in it, or if I've read it and not enjoyed it, or if I know someone else would really like it much more than, than I would. How a book looks is never going to inform whether or not I'm going to keep it. The final question, which is question number seven, is I have to award the King of Ugliness title to one of the books in my collection. It's actually going to have to go to one that doesn't really have a cover. I feel really bad because Hope Mirror Lisa's Love in the Mist came like this at uni. And in the uni bookstore, you know, almost everything had some semblance of a cover and some art design, no matter how old the book was. Like it had a, you know, a proper blurb on the back and something going on here. And for whatever reason, this one just didn't. And I think that's a right shame. I've not read the book yet, even though I've owned it now for, what, eight years? But I know it's a classic, and I know Neil Gaiman loves it, and I think it just deserved a cover, because the poor thing does, you know, all, all bleak and blank and stuff. And it's a fantasy, so I'm sure there was plenty of material to work with to design an interesting cover, but it was just without one, which I think is mighty sad. So I'm not really crowning it King of Ugliness, because I think that's really harsh, but it's just, I felt I should bring this one up, because it was denied anything at all. You know, I'm not going to go out and hunt down another copy of it just to have a pretty cover. I've got the book and that's what matters. This is the stuff that matters, people. What's inside? Yeah, I'm still satisfied. Whoever designs Lily Wilkinson's books in Australia, Alan and Unwin, talk to your designers because I think you're being really mean. <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't like books that have, you know, photos. Just don't really go for that. I'm just sick of the tradition of girls in dresses, silhouette, thing. You know, the books themselves may be fine, that doesn't bother me, but it puts me on edge because it's come to mean a certain something, a certain kind of trope in young adults, and I'm also just sick of seeing the same kind of thing on the shelves, row after row, so. I won't tag people directly, uh, if you want to do this, please do feel free. That was my, kind of explaining my response to books and their attractiveness or lack thereof, so. Yeah, that was the Ugly Book Covers tag. Thank you, Leslie, for tagging me. I hope I went okay with it. Okay, that's all. Bye.